Good morning, uh, welcome to our second spot and I think Dr. Brown has told you a lot so I don't have to tell you a lot then, <laughs> that make my life easier. Uh, right here what we have is a, on display breeding products that are coming from various uh, uh, ecologies of rice and as we know uh, rice is grown under a range of ecologies ranging from upland to flood prone and so on but two of the ecologies major ecologies where rice is production comes from is irrigated and rain panoramas and we have series of products on display suitable for those ecologies and we employ three uh, strategies to develop new germplasm conventional breeding which forms the backbone of our breeding program then we also use marketed uh, selection and marketed backcrossing. Uh, we have some products on display for that. And then we also use genetically modified approach. Of course, we don't have any product on display here because no rices have been released uh, as a GMO product so far. So that is still under R&D. We cannot show you here in the field anything, but if you're interested, uh, you have to visit the lab to see the progress being made in that direction. So then we have two kinds of breeding products here, inbred rices and also hybrid rices. So on my right, if you look at it, the breeding products, the inbred breeding products, on the extreme right, we are just displaying you some of the tropical japonica germplasm, which was uh, bred starting in 1990s. And we are borrowing traits like, uh, say, uh, strong combs, which will uh, hopefully will be uh, tolerant to even uh, moderate typhoons, for example, strong combs and big panicles and other kind of traits, photosynthetic traits that we can bring in from that germplasm into Indicas. So by doing that kind of crosses, we have actually been able to develop a variety which is the first commercial variety released in the Philippines from crosses with tropical japonica and Indicas, which is N6158. One of the questions which is very common from the previous groups also is, the produ production here doesn't look very good. The reason being we were hit with four typhoons in last one month alone. So we are actually very fortunate to see something here in the field. We were really worried we won't see anything here. But we do have uh, some of uh, the lines which have survived that kind of stress. So the production is not up to its maximum, for example. So. What you see here is 158 is one of uh, the varieties released in the Philippines, which is becoming very popular already in the Philippines because of its uh, biotic stress tolerance and also good grain quality. It is replacing many of the old varieties in the Philippines already. Although still we have PSBRC82 as a leading variety in, in the Philippines, but this is, we have reports that is picking up very fast. So we won't be surprised in the next two, three years it might overtake as, as a number one variety in the Philippines. Then we have also developed uh, some aromatic germplasm. Uh, the original source was basmati. And we developed dwarf types and this has been released also as a variety in the Philippines. It doesn't match the quality of uh, basmati, but uh, it still has aroma and uh, is, is it's not to compete with the dwarf basmatis that we see from Dr. A.K. Singh's group, for example, in, in Delhi, because they are directly competing with basmatis. But it still has aroma, it, it might have some potentials uh, to be used in crosses and, and so on and so forth. Then in the irrigated environment, we have some of the lines which are doing very well under other range of environments like water stress environments. One of the example is IR78581, that line, particular line. It is very high yielding under all the uh, stresses that we have uh, seen so far, water stress, artery wetting drying, drought, uh, less water, stress, and so on and so forth. 
even in irrigated environments. So this has a very wide adaptability in terms of production ability. So it's, it's yielding very well uh, under those conditions. So if we move further, then we have uh, another line which is doing very well under direct seeding conditions. For example, uh, because of uh, labor shortage, we would be moving on to from transplanted to direct seeding. So we are having some germplasm which is doing extremely well under direct seeding conditions. And we expect that uh, we will use this kind of germplasm to make crosses and develop future varieties of rice more uh, adapted to direct seeding. Then for hybrid rice breeding, we have uh, several hybrids on display. Those hybrids which are having uh, the prefix as mestizo, those are the ones that have been released as commercial uh, hybrids in the Philippines. And those which don't have mestizo as a prefix, IR uh, cross number, those are our new products in the pipeline. Those will be shared with the breeders and, and private companies uh, to evaluate those in target countries, including Philippines. So that uh, effort is going on. And then next is we have products that Dr. Bard explained yesterday morning in his lecture, whereby he's using weedy rices or um, rices which don't look very well per se, they don't produce anything, but they have genes which can be transferred into uh, modern varieties of rices. And one of the examples he showed also was where he has used Oriza rufipogon wild species to transfer tungro resistance into IS-64. He shows one, showed one of the slides. And this is that uh, Meratag 9 variety released in the Philippines, which is showing tungro tolerance. Uh, and that's, that's being grown uh, at farmer's field. And then next is AS-996. This is also a product of uh, cross between Oriza Taiwan, Oriza Rufipogon, and this is tolerant to acid sulfate soils, and that's being, uh, Dr. Brad also showed this uh, was a national variety in, in Vietnam. Because of its uh, very short duration, it's also tolerant to BPH, also tolerant to acid sulfate soils. So this is a, a very good example of a product uh, developed from crosses between wild species and, uh, and cultivated species. Then in the Philippines, this particular variety was released by crossing Oriza longis terminata with Oriza sativa. And then we move on to the germplasm which has been bred by a rain-fed uh, team in, in Erie. It's a drought-tolerant germplasm. And it has been, this particular line has been released as a variety in the Philippines this year. This is the first variety released for drought tolerance in, in the Philippines. And then also a sister line has been also released as a variety in India for drought prone environments as well. So we are making a lot of progress in uh, rain, rain for environments. Sabagidan. Sabagidan, yes. It doesn't look very good here because of uh, the aerobatic stress I'm talking about we had uh, in the last four weeks. Then we are moving on to an area which is Dr. Arke Singh can explain much better who is in the audience here. He, he is, uh, is the breeder for soil tolerance varieties. So he has been able to uh, develop a range of products that have been released as varieties in the Philippines. The latest being, for example, NSIC RC182 and then other uh, varieties released from the previous effort, the SPRC88. Uh, so this kind of uh, germplasm has, is also available uh, to be shared for those areas where salt is, is a major uh, biotic stress. And then we have some elite breeding lines that are in the pipeline uh, that, will, that also shows uh, tolerance to uh, salt, uh, abiotic stress. The next is, uh, I said we are using markers to develop uh, products as well. And there are several examples here where sub-1 gene has been transferred into mega varieties using marker-aided backcrossing. For example, in the Philippines, IR64 with sub-1 was released as a variety this year, where marker-aided backcrossing was used to upgrade IR64. And then for India, for example, Swarna is a mega variety in eastern India, and uh, that was also upgraded with sub-1 uh, using marketed backcrossing, and it has been released as a variety in India as well. Then we 